Wouldn't it be great to flip a single switch and it instantly change what your factory produces according to your demand? That is one of the reasons why I want logic gates in Satisfactory. And update 8 brought a heap of changes, but one I've yet to see being talked about is the priority power switch. So today I thought I'd explore its potential to help create basic logic. Now the priority power switch is a switch that can be given a priority within a network, allowing us to choose what should shut down and what should remain online whenever we have a power outage. More importantly, it allows us to access any priority power switch and turn them on and off across our world from a single location. This is incredibly powerful as it allows us to create our own control areas where we're, we're viewing what's being produced. But how does this equate to logic? Well, simply put, it doesn't, but it does allow us to control switches across a network from a single control panel. And we can then partner that with a smart splitter to create a basic logic gate. Now, for example, if this factory is on, resources are consumed. And if this factory is off, resources back up and overflow to another factory where they're consumed. Um, to actually put this into an example form, if I turn this switch on, iron plates are produced. If I turn this switch off, iron rods are produced. And I think we can get a lot more complicated with it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you do know which logic gate this resembles, do let me know in the comments below, as I'd love to know. And if you're also interested in seeing more guides like this, make sure to subscribe as we've got plenty more planned. But with that out the way, let's expand on this. What if we created a factory which had four outputs, one being for steel, one for iron rods, one for iron plates, and finally for reinforced iron plates. Is this possible? Could we create a system based on this, which would easily allow us to dictate what items go where? Well, the simple answer is yes, and you can scale this as you wish, providing you follow these four rules. So firstly, as we're heavily relying on belt saturation for this, we will need to set the smart splitter to overflow for the resources which are going to be going to the second factory in a line. This means that as long as the first factory is turned off, the resources will overflow to the next factory and follow on to the following factories until it reaches its intended destination. Now, our second rule is that for each smart splitter that we place, we will also use only two of its outputs. This is because we cannot prioritize more than one output currently. We have the option for overflow, dedicated items, any or any um, unselected item. I don't know what the term is. I'm not looking at the game currently. But basically, we can only use the overflow and then another option. Otherwise, it's going to start load balancing and we don't want that. Unless you want to use that in your factory. Our third rule, alongside each smart splitter, we will also have a single priority power switch. This is going to help keep everything simple. And finally, the factory that resources are sent to first will be connected to the B network of a priority switch. One thing that I should mention if you're looking at my factory, my last factory in the network is constantly running. It doesn't matter regardless of whether we, we turn it on or off, I leave it on and that's because no resources are going to it until the very last section. So there's no real reason for us to have a switch turning it on and off. We just need to make sure that the resources arrive there. Uh, you can obviously add a switch to yours if you want, but I just don't see the necessity for that. Now in this setting, we do have our four factories. We have the steel foundry, Following that, we have the reinforced iron plate factory, then our iron plates, and finally the rods factory. Now, each factory is set to consume a total of 270 iron ingots per minute, which is one full Mark III belt. And for this um, example, I'm just going to connect a storage unit full of iron ingots to this factory network.
So firstly, the iron ingots are going to head up to the smart splitter, which then sends the resources to our first factory, the steel foundries, when the switch is turned on. For this, you're going to want the uh, smart splitter to be set to iron ingots on the first output that you're going to use for the steel foundries, if you're following my example. And then we're also going to have a overflow setting for the next tier, which we'll talk about in a moment. So when we've turned this switch on, steel is produced. However, when you turn this switch off, the iron ingots start to back up down the line to a point where they're back at the smart splitter and they're going to overflow to the next smart splitter. And with that, the next priority power switch combination that we've got. So from here, the resources are then going to be sent to the reinforced iron plate factory, providing the switch is set to on. You can see how this starts to repeat itself. So you're going to want to make sure that the resources going to the reinforced iron plates factory are set to iron ingots or any, whichever you prefer on the smart splitter output. And then if you turn the factory off, the resources once again are going to back up down the line to the smart splitter, where they're then going to be overflown to the next tier of factory. We're then going to repeat the system again with one line heading resources to the iron factory and then the overflow line running the resources to the iron rod factory. Now the iron plate factory is going to be connected to the power switch, priority power switch. So when we turn that on, the iron plates are being produced. And then if we turn that off, the resources are going to be sent to the iron rod factory and produced. In all, it really is quite a simple system to set up. It just gets obviously more and more complicated the more resources that you add to this. So potentially it's a cool idea that can be utilized in smaller factories within your world. But again, this is just very basic logic at its very simplest form. But it's certainly given me some really big ideas that I think you may see in one of our upcoming Let's Play episodes, which if you are interested, will be attached to one of the cards in the next uh, end screen. But guys, we are going to leave it there. Please hit the thumbs up if you did enjoy the video. And obviously, if you want to see more and haven't already, do subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Do let me know if you're going to attempt doing this. And if so, with what? What are you going to be producing? But special thanks does go to all of our amazing patrons, most notably our solo clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben, Star, Shoku, the Emin Wolf, and that Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the City Rat. But until next time, as always, ciao for now.